I was recently told that people who are too trusting are putting everyone else at risk. It's an important concept, and it's not that you want everyone to be conspiratorial, but we need people who don't just take a story as a fact. You need to cross-check it. And I got that concept from uh, this discussion about emergency journalism and the cost of silence. It's on my Substack if you're interested. And it was highlighted by Rob Driscoll from Big Media. And he was pointing out some of the mistakes that were made during the pandemic were just really because some people didn't ask any questions. And so today I'm talking about colon cancer. And I'm using this article as a template, fit and healthy Clapham mom given two years to live after feeling bloated on holiday. This is from uh, London, my London newspaper. But if you look at the Google News here, you'll see multiple stories about this and also about a 34 year old who has colon cancer. What disturbed me was the fact that when you looked at these articles, they were talking about the rising trend of colon cancer over the past 10 years. Anyone who has been following me would realize that by now, I usually am asking some pretty hard And as I've said on many occasions, there is an elephant in the room. Nobody knows why it's there. Nobody knows why it's doing what it's doing. But there is an elephant sitting right in the middle of everything. And until we acknowledge this elephant, we will go around in a circle. So what I'm doing here today is giving you some insights into how you look at some of those newspaper articles. And at the moment, it's highlighting the fact that colon cancer is increasing in younger adults. Now, when you look at carefully what they're saying, and this here is uh, another article that was highlighted because they're recognizing it's occurring. And in this case here, uh, get it to here, the rise of bowel cancer in younger population uh, bowel cancer, fourth most common in the UK, 40,000 new cases per year. It's normally with older people, but they're finding that there was an around 50% increase since the mid-1990s. Okay? The, the problem with this is that it gives the impression that there has been a gradual trajectory of increasing bowel cancer over the period of time. And this is what they would then say, theories behind the increase, changes to the microbiome or bacteria in the gut, change in diet, okay, family history of bowel cancer, more people. Um, and so these are some of the things that they are looking at, what people are eating and so on. And so yes, all of these can be factors, but you are being groomed. You're being groomed into thinking that these patterns are just randomly, gradually increasing, and they are talking about it now because it's part of the normal trajectory. This is where I'm here to try and break up the narrative because it's very important for us to acknowledge what is going on. I have the luxury of being able to look at lots of statistical data and to analyze these things critically. Maybe more difficult for you if you don't know how to look for it. But here are the numbers with regards to colon cancer. Okay, I'm going to show you the total numbers and I'm going to show you the trajectory over about nine years looking at the UK with hospital admission uh, um, data. So you can see over here is a financial year, 2015 to 16 all the way down to 24, 25 in red. They're looking at the total admissions, and you can see 92, 91, all the way down to 2019, 2020. So there was a rise from 92,267 to 94,817. When you hit 2021, there was a fall because people didn't go into hospital with their bowel issues. And then the surge post 2021, 
So 99,000 instead of 94, this is what you expect. But in 2022, it's suddenly 100,000, then 104, then 108. What is going on? Now, they will tell you that this is just part of the normal trajectory. And so what I've done is I've put it on a chart so that, yes, it would look a little bit easier for you to understand. This is what it looks like. And you can see here that this was slight rise between 2016 to 2019. This fall off in 2020 because people didn't go into hospital to 2021. Then you see the rise 2022. Now, this would not have jumped as significantly because, except that you had a fall off. So you expect somewhat of a jump there, but you would expect it to come back in line with the general trend rolling around here with a slight increase. But in 2023, it rises further. 2024, 2025, and I guarantee you in 2026, it's going to continue this upward trajectory going off the scale. And the numbers are nothing like what you would have seen before. You would again have been told, well, this is a problem, that's something that we expect in terms of older patients. And again, dietary changes and so on. But the case that I showed you was a 46-year-old and the other one that was mentioned was a 34-year-old. So what is happening in the younger cohorts? And again, we use a similar principle because you could see that the trend didn't shift that much between 2016 to 2019. And this is what it looks like. Ages 25 to 49, Finished consultant episodes in the UK. That means that the person from the start of their admission um, all the way through all the consultant um, um, uh, meetings and clinics. So it tells you technically the amount of patients. And in 2015 to 2016, you can see this is pretty stable for 25 to 29 year olds. 30 to 34 year olds actually fell. There was an increase in the 35 to 39 year olds from about 1400 to 17, almost 1800. But then, once over 40, almost 2000 to almost 5000, 3400 to 5100, 8300 to this is the total to 12,879. Where the rise really kicked off is in the 40 to 49 age group, where you have a huge rise in the numbers of cases that are occurring in this age group. This is certainly within the pandemic period. And it leads us back to the question of the elephant in the room. Now, as I said before, some people are not too concerned about the elephant. But if the elephant is causing or driving some of these patterns, they will only continue to rise. And so therefore, when you reflect carefully and look at what you see in the news, and this is the point that I'm making, is that when you see in the news something like that, and you are told that this trajectory in terms of the um, cancer has been going on, since 50% since the mid-1990s, recognize that the period of time that you really need to focus on is the pandemic, post-pandemic period. You want to know whether or not that trajectory has changed significantly in that period. And this is what I mean. And if you haven't seen it, this is what it would look like suddenly this trajectory takes off because this post-pandemic pandemic period is associated with elephants. We don't know for certain if it's absolutely connected, but I can know at least six or seven mechanisms that could increase the risk. That's where we are at the moment. It is a big challenge, but as I said, the issue is people need to start asking more questions. Don't just accept that you are told that this is what it is. Don't worry. The trend was always going up. No, you want to know 
post pandemic, did you see an acceleration in the trend? And if you did, what is the mechanism? You will be told it's COVID infection, of course, but then you must push it further. If it is COVID, what is the mechanism of that? And then you finish your statement by asking a simple question. Is it possible that this could be driven by the elephant in the room? No good science would, scientists would say no. They will say, well, we don't know, but there is no evidence that it is. And your follow-through question is to say, what have you been looking for? And at that point, you will not get an answer. And that would be the end of the conversation. But I am explaining to you, there is a responsibility now to ask hard questions, challenge your trusting people, force them to think, not just accept what is in front of them. Because as you can tell, whatever you watch, whatever you read, there is usually an agenda behind it. You have to become wiser and better prepared for the future. Have a great evening. A hero, an immune adventure. Humming Heroes, your lyrical guide to the body's defenders. Now on Amazon. Check the links below.